Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight I'm going to be talking about what happened to me in 2015 and 16 and why it was so unnerving for me. That's next. Tonight I'm on Jeanette's property and I'm probably two or three blocks from the, the road, not too far. Sun's dropping pretty quick, but uh, I got a spot picked out. I'm heading back to it. Got the creek off to my side here. It's called Jackson Creek. For tonight's beer, it's called Voodoo Ranger IPA, Imperial IPA, and we are going to go drop that into the creek. Cheers. Got a little cup tonight. Alright, Voodoo Ranger. That's by a new Belgium brewery. And, uh, whew. <laughs> Got a frosty top on that one. So, this is what happened to me in 2015 and 16 I was living in Montana I lost my job as a graphic designer for the gaming industry design slot machines and I've been looking for work for about two months I landed a job in Reno Nevada and once I looked into Reno Nevada I was pretty excited to find out the Sierra Nevada mountains are there Yosemite is south of here. Lassen Volcanic National Park is north and west of here. And the Sierra Nevadas are over 400 miles long. 
has the highest point in the lower 48 of the United States, which is Mount Whitney, 15,505 feet high. And then just east of there is Death Valley, and Death Valley is, the lowest point in Death Valley is Badwater, and that is 282 feet below sea level. Several uh, wilderness areas, national forests, go up, line the Sierra Nevada mountains. Just a wonderful mountain range. So that fall, I was started exploring, and this particular weekend, I went to north of Reno and then straight west to a little community called Gray Eagle. And up above Gray Eagle is like this big uplift. It's like a plateau. And at the top of this is a basin. It's called the Lakes Basin, the Gold Lakes Basin to be specific. And it was just a day trip, but I was checking out. I'm always making a mental checklist of, of what's out there and this particular lake was called Goose Lake, which is just up the road from Gold Lake, which is a really big lake. And this lake happened to have a, it's called a walk-in campsite. So you can't drive to it, you just literally park your vehicle and you carry your stuff out to it. You're not backpacking, but you're not car camping either. It's like in between. And that's pretty cool, you're kind of out there. So I made a note of that. That's why I'm talking about that right now. And it had been raining all week. And this particular day, it was, it was October 17th, 2015. And I decided to start hiking around the lake. I didn't want to go back to the new apartment and hang out on a rainy afternoon. I thought, let's just put the rain gear on and head out. And I had a good time. There's no trails, really thick brush, kind of like this. And I went all the way around the lake, the back side of the lake, and as I was coming around towards the north end of it, still on the back side, I found in the mud next to the lake a small footprint. And the footprint was a human-like footprint, and it was only about this big. And I went, wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> Number one, who would let their three or four year old walk around on this side of the lake? It was really thick brush, uh, logs and rocks along the shore, really rough. I mean, you don't want to be walking in that, especially in the mud, because underneath the mud is half submerged rocks in the sediment of the lake, and then pine cones and sticks. And I thought, that's really interesting. I don't know if that's a human footprint. I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. I, then I found another one. Took another picture of, of that. I, I think I had some sunglasses with me or some glasses as scale. And then I found a, a series of footprints in the mud next to the lake. And people, as you know, they, they walk like this. Like that, left, right, left, right. These tracks, were right, left, right, left, and some even over, over swung like that. Almost like whoever or whatever made it was, was like walking on a tightrope. I thought, wow, look at that. And I even took a picture, and then in Photoshop, I put a straight line to show how straight it was, and then I put R, L, R, L to show right, left, right, left. And again, I thought, there's no way some mother would let their small child walk around back here. And also I had to climb over some downfall trees to get out of the north side of the lake there. And it had been raining all week long. There was no one else up there. And I just thought that was really interesting. So there's, there's one. <laughs> the next year, I was in Lassen National Park. I was hanging out with some friends. We did, we climbed the Lassen Peak, wonderful national park, doesn't get a lot of visitors. It's very Yellowstone-like. It has boiling hot springs, mud pots, fumaroles, a couple of geysers even, waterfalls, peaks, high alpine country. It's, it's uh, Yellowstone-like, it's pretty cool, I love it. So my friends left early, and then I had a few more days time off, and I decided to do some exploring. 
I found this really large meadow next to the highway. Very inviting. Just to see this big green meadow. And then Lassen Peak was off in the distance, just looming over this valley. And you can see the pine trees all around, but just clearly an uh, open meadow. And in the middle of the meadow was this super clear, gin clear creek. I forget the name of it. And it was filled with brook trout. Well, schools of them anyways. So I hiked out and I f started following this creek Notice the brook trout and I would peek up over the edge of the stream and look in and they would see me and they would just bolt and they would bolt upstream. And then I followed him and then I would kind of sneak around and then peek up and kind of try to spy on him. And then they would, and they did this, we did this back and forth for a while and I went back there a little ways. And at one point I got up from, from checking out the brook trout and I noticed a large footprint not a small one this time but a large footprint in the dirt because it had rained earlier in the week and then it dried out and I saw this footprint clearly in the dry mud and I happened to have my camera so I put that and I had a little backpack and I put the tripod and I took a picture of that heading out but I found a few more, took a few more pictures, and I, I followed it best I could, and I lost it in the grass somewhere. And I remember the sun was going down, and I could see the edges of the trees all around me, except for behind me, which is where the creek drained out, heading back to my car. And I had just kind of a feeling like I should probably turn around, because it was really dark in the forest. Sun is going down. It's still sunny in the meadow, but in the forest it was really dark in there. And I didn't have a feeling that something was watching me, but I just had a feeling that I should, because of the footprints, because of this wilderness and the sun going down, let's just follow the creek straight back to the vehicle and uh, just ca call it a day. But I thought really cool finding a footprint like that. And I'd been reading some books at that time about, let's just say it, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and Northern California, and the Sierra Nevadas. And I thought, wow, this is kind of exciting, a little spooky, but kind of exciting at the same time. Nothing else happened on that trip. That fall, I went back to Goose Lake above Gray Eagle in the Sierra Nevadas, Plumas National Forest. It actually borders Plumas National Forest, Tahoe National Forest. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful area in the, the Sierras. I love it. It's uh, living in Montana for 17 years. It was, uh, it was just really cool to find a place that I felt at home at. And I still, I live here, I still feel very at home here, and I, I love it. So. so I went back to Goose Lake. I remembered the walk-in campsite. Now, this was October again, so this was like exactly a year later from when I saw the first set of footprints, the little teeny ones. I go to this walk-in campsite and I pick the farthest one to the south end of the lake. I set up my camp, have dinner, super starry night. In fact, early in the evening the moon came out, just enough to illuminate. And on the other side of the lake, I hear this howl. Not a coyote, not a dog. There's no wolves out there. And it was this high-pitched, kind of with, with some bass to it, though. And it went, and I, and I remembered this because it was like a, a, uh, a bell, bell chart. It goes up, over, and then back down. And it went something like this. But louder with more bass and... And I immediately caught my attention, and I hadn't gone in the tent yet 
fire was out, moon was kind of going away, it was, so it was getting dark, but the stars really came out really nice. And I went, wow, okay, and I heard, as soon as I heard the woo, it felt maybe like, is that a crane or something, or some kind of a crane? But I went, God, that is so, it's got such bass to it. It's just, it just, it did sound like a bird. <laughs> and it was clearly on the other side of the lake because I'd been there all afternoon and early evening and then now night. And immediately after that, south of me, I heard coyotes, a pack of them. And they weren't like singing, they were more like responding, not necessarily communicating I mean I don't know for sure but it they sound like they were reacting or responding to this and then it happened a second time and I'm like wow I started getting some chills because I was like okay I'm at this end of the lake I'm by myself I felt pretty vulnerable and my campsite was in really thick brush and I'm like okay you know, we'll, we'll get through this. <laughs> it's just a howl. And then I heard it a third time. And then it was quiet. And it was, I didn't hear anything else. Beautiful starry night. So I go to bed. About an hour later, I'm half asleep. It's about 11.30 now at night, obviously. <laughs> and I hear behind my tent, now I hear something behind my tent. And it gets my attention right away and I'm a little stressed out. I could feel the hair in the back of my neck kind of going up. I'm like, okay, got my attention. I didn't turn the light on yet. I felt, sometimes when, when you hear something, you feel safer when it's dark Maybe you're in your sleeping bag, you're in your tent. <laughs> and I could hear it walking. Not all the way around me, just behind me. Kind of back and forth, I couldn't quite tell. Maybe about 25, 30 feet straight behind me. The door of my tent is facing this way. Whatever it was, was straight behind me. And I'm like, okay, just gonna see what's going on here. Just take a deep breath. I had the flash, you know, the uh, headlight in my hand, ready to go. <clears throat> and then I hear it, it stops, it's kind of quiet. And I'm listening super intently. Because whatever it is, it's still out there. It's right there, it's right behind me, 20 feet. And again, I'm not going to leave. And then all of a sudden I hear like stomping, like like that. And then, and kind of some rustling with the, the brush. And I'm like, okay, okay, got the flashlight, I'm ready. Holy shit, here we go. <laughs> Do you remember the movie Poltergeist? <laughs> Well, at one point, the little girl goes, they're here, and it knows I'm here. It's, it's responding or reacting to me because it's clearly behind me. And then I hear, right after that, I hear this deep from like your chest. <sighs> Something like that. Louder, though, but louder. And I'm like, holy shit. Okay. I just like, turn the light on. Whatever it is, it knows I'm here. I'm not going to hide it. It knows I'm here. I'm not going to hide from it. And I can kind of hear it breathing a little bit. <laughs> you know, if it's a black bear, could be a black bear. I need to know what's going on. I need to know what's out there. I got to know because information is powerful, right? So, okay, I get the nerve up. Got the light. Lights already on. And and my tent is it's a dome tent, so it kind of goes like this, right? 
with like an angle. So when you unzip it, you can stand up and still be inside of it somewhat. So I unzip it, I crouch down, I stand up to, so I can stay in the tent. I'm not getting out of the damn tent at this point. There's no way. Yeah, I'm like feeling it, you know, just feeling it. But I'm just determined. I'm kind of in this in between state. I'm determined to uh, know what's going on and to ride this damn thing out. So I stand up, I turn around right away and I shine the light. I didn't see anything. I saw where about whatever this was, whether it was a bear, whether it was something larger, more human-like, hairy man <laughs> and I could see this spot where in was like leaves and pine needles and a couple of tree trunks and then thick brush so I was like whatever it was had to be right there I could see it I could see it there's nothing there I'm like okay okay it's all good maybe he stepped behind that big tree to the right or the left, I don't know, I don't know. Um, and then all of a sudden I feel vulnerable from the back, the back side, because when you're in the dark, you're like, you get so focused one direction, you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> I got the whole forest behind me. Holy crap, okay. So I look behind me, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything else, and I, quickly get back in the tent, zip it down, and about 15 minutes later, I could clearly hear something just slowly, just kind of the brush, just kind of slowly moving, just like it was moving on. Whatever it was, was moving away around the other side of the lake, the south, and then around the back side of the lake, I could hear something. And it wasn't as loud as the initial thing. It was more like it was just, it was just leaving. And I felt some relief, obviously, from that. Still a little unnerved. Went to sleep, woke up, immediately unzipped the tent, got out, <clears throat> went over to that spot that I, between the two trees, Looking for tracks. I didn't see anything. Did not see anything. It was mostly pine needles, all I know. So that is my encounter story. So if you guys have any stories or encounters that you guys have had, I would be uh, really interested in hearing them. And if you want to, if you would like me to, I could share them on the channel here with the rest of our viewers I could retell it or I could just read it. I have a designated email address. It's called basecampchris2 at gmail.com. I would love to hear what's happened to you guys as well. All right, well, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun and looking forward to hearing from you. We will see you on the next one. As always, keep hiking.